Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show, where we are all about empowering women to live a financially free and balanced life. And we do that twice a week, right, Andressa? And this uh -huh. week is all about a mini-sode where we dive into a topic and get, go as deep but brief as we can and try to keep it 10 minutes or less because we know you're busy ladies and men who listen to our show. And we just want to be respectful of that and give you a nugget, give you a few nuggets to take into your day and to apply to your investing in, investing strategies. Okay. So Andressa, here's what I want to talk about. I, mm. uh, we do, you and I get the opportunity and the honor to speak at a lot of different conferences and and, and groups. And, and the, the topic of scaling, I think, is such a big topic in our space, right? Yeah. And um, <clears throat> there's so many, right, bigger pockets, forums, and, and so much conversation in the investor community uh, about scaling. And, and I know you and I teach a lot about strategies and ways to do it. But I want to talk about, as we talk about scaling today on this mini soda, I really want to put out a couple, couple key questions before we even get into like strategies on how to scale. Because scaling isn't for everyone, mm -hmm. and you can actually achieve. There are people who achieve their financial freedom goals without scaling. So the question really is about, and I'm just a so beautifully said this as we prepare for all of our, our, our episodes, are you scaling or are you growing or, or, or are you scaling and growing? <laughs> really? It's, it's, it's twofold. And so that's the, the first question is this, it's not just scaling for scaling, just to say you have more doors or you have more properties, but is it, is it going to help you grow to where you need to be both in your financial goals and also your own personal goals, right? Who you are. So, so those are really important things. I don't know if you want to add anything, Andressa. Yeah, I think there's a difference be between scaling and growing, right? Because many times, like if I duplicate what I have right now as is, and and let's say it's chaos, right? I'm duplicating chaos. Scaling is when you take yourself out of the picture, when you automatize, when you right. build teams so you can get the hell out of your own position. So yeah. think about that. There's a difference. And it's not a matter of quantity. You can do that with one house, two houses. It's just how, what is important to you? Yeah. And doing it with confidence, right? Because sometimes yep. when we're scaling, it's scary, right? It's, it's a little nerve wracking. It's like, wow, I know I can handle this, but how can I handle that, right? And it's, it, it's, it's also not the whole concept of who, not how. And I'm going to speak to that. So I have a few suggestions for you, a few ideas. And, and before I go there too, is get reconnected to your lifestyle goals. Get reconnected to your goals, short-term, long-term. You know, there was a woman who came up to me at a conference and said, hey, I think syndication is the right thing for me. I said, that's great. Why? She goes, oh, it's just something I haven't done. And I think that's how you get into bigger deals. And I said, that's true. I, we've syndicated more than 11 projects. You know, we've syndicated for a number of years. I said, what are you doing now? She's like, I'm buying fourplexes. I said, how far are you from your financial freedom goals? She's mm -hmm. like, I'm about a $500. I'm sorry, $1,000 off from my financial oh, freedom goal in one month. I said, well, why don't you buy a couple more fourplexes? Yeah. That seems like it makes more sense. Well, why do you say? I said, well, syndication is a whole other business. Not saying you can't do it or it might be a good pivot for you, but if we want to achieve our lifestyle goals and she wanted more time with her kids and, and, and I obviously had talked to her much more knowing her lifestyle goals and her, her personal goals, it just made sense to keep doing what she was doing and add, add on versus kind of pivot. And there's no right and wrong, but I'll just say that it's not always what bigger is not always better. And I, I just, I don't know, and Justin and I speak a lot about that on our podcast, but I want to speak to that too. So let's go through a, just a few key things to think about when you're scaling. I can't speak enough about it, but the power of focus. The power of focus gives you freedom. And I've talked about this in the past, but the amount of different things I got involved in when I started. And for the first six years of our investing career, me and my husband, Matt, we got involved with so many different pieces, so many different asset classes, so many different strategies. And that really slowed our growth, hands down. It made for great lessons and great teaching points that now that I can share, but in terms of growth or scaling, completely slowed us down until we got focused on multifamily. Not just multifamily, but we said we're going to start with small and we're going to scale into larger buildings, but it's going to be the same 
asset class and the same market initially. Then we pivoted out of the initial market into a new market when it was the time was right. I just say that because, right, Angessa, we, we, we talk about focus, 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 but it, there's such power and leverage in focus. So I just want to really make that clear. What can you focus on to scale? That's a really important question to answer, what you, what you can focus on to scale. And it's a challenge, I think, especially nowadays, because many people see different asset classes and say, oh, they're saying this is the next thing, or they're saying that now with the market, there's full potential on, on this one. And I'm not saying that there isn't, right? I mean, we can, we can, with women, we can make it work, whatever strategy you pick, yeah. you're going to make it work. That's not even the point. Just pivot, pivot to a new, new area and focus on a new area or continue on the one that you are in. But either way, the focus here that Liz is um, so eloquently telling you that has, you know, affected her growth. Yeah. I, I think that that's the key. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because our unit size increased, but our asset class remained the same. So mm-hmm. there is something you're, you are mitigating risk with that. Now, new markets pose a new risk, right? Because it's yep. a new market. But, you know, I think, you know, again, you just want to continue to ask as you focus on something to scale upon, again, how can you mitigate risk? Right. That's the big question. Second thing I want to share with you is obviously the financial financial management. I can't stress this enough. If you're going to scale your portfolio, uh, that is critical, right? That's that's not even just important. It's critical. A couple of things. Number one, if you're not really managing your three single family homes or your five single family homes and you want to scale, the ship will sink, right? If you're not managing what you have financially, what's coming in, what's going out, what are things costing me? How can I reduce my expenses? How can I increase income? Do I have a good hold? What my cash flow is? All those things. If you don't know that for the three units, it's really going to get really messy on 10, 20 and 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 further. So uh nip all that in the bud. You know, nip that in the bud now when you have a smaller portfolio so that you're in the position to scale. I would even go one step further and have a hold on your financial house, personal financial house. Again, income expenses just have a general, obviously not general, you need to know your numbers. And the more you know your numbers, it's going to make you feel more comfortable being able to scale. The other big thing is obviously creative financing. A lot of people who scale into larger buildings or more units do with other people, right? And there's a lot of ways to do that. But obviously, you probably heard me talk about private uh, money and us about private money in the past. But think of it in three buckets, debt, which is private lending, uh, small equity, which is like literally partnering with another active person to go in and buy maybe that duplex or that fourplex or that 10 unit. And then it's large equity, right? And that's really more on like the passive side where you're literally syndicating and you're working with passive investors. That's literally our our process in terms of, of how we kind of got to the Burr strategy, small multis to large multis. But again, creative financing, if you know nothing about that and you only use your own money, don't be scared. Just start asking the questions. Start educating yourself now on how you can finance bigger properties and and bigger deals, especially if you are kind of committed to scaling. You don't need to pull the trigger right now. Just start asking the questions and getting familiar. Um, And the last thing I want to share here, I can't stress this enough. Andres and I talk a lot about this, is just the power of partnerships and teams. You cannot scale by yourself really, really hard. It's really, really hard. What? I know. It, and 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 we know that theoretically, I'm just, so let's just call it really, be really straight with all of you. But we try to scale by ourselves. But we try to do it anyway. So, you know, it, it's really easy. And I, I speak to this because we managed everything locally because everything was in 30 minutes. So when the tenant needed, tenant had a problem late night, oh, God. we would go out to do that. No. And, no. You know, we did all that. We, we've oh. been there and done that. And so- as we start to scale outside of our market, local market, it's one of the best things that could be for us because we're very hands-on people who like to do everything. So it's actually the perfect way for us to expand and start to get a little uncomfortable, quite honestly. First, an hour and a half away and then a plane ride away. A lot of our, most of our assets are not close anymore. The majority, right? So I, I say that because as you navigate with Meeting people at meetups, invest her meetups. You go to conferences, invest her con. You go into different RIA meetings. You're, you're meeting people on a business level, out, inside real estate investing, outside of real estate investing. Start to get really good at meeting people and saying, okay, what do I need to scale? 
And who are the people that can maybe help me get there? And just start to be mindful of that before you go into that next meetup, before you go into that, 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 you know, event, before you even go into a nonprofit, um, you know, uh, nonprofit kind of like, you know, uh, charity event where there's mm-hmm. some great, great events to go to, to meet high level people in your community that might be able to invest with you, by the way. So those kinds of things go into it, knowing what value you bring to the team. If, if, if scaling vacation rentals is what you want to do, know what value you bring. And then start to say, who who do I need to help me get it to another level? Do I really need an ops person? I'm really good with people. Or do I really need the money side? Or do I really need boots on the ground? I just don't have that local team in Orlando that I really need. Whatever it is. Um, and that's what I have for you today. I think focus, first off, do some soul searching. Is scaling right for you? Are you scaling or growing or doing both? And it, they're not all created equal. Do some soul searching. Get get really clear on the focus of what you're going to go after. And uh, and then obviously get really clear on your money, relationship to money, all of the above, and then how you're going to source money for your bigger deals. And obviously the partnership and the team. What are you good at? And who who do you need to help you get to where you want to go? Love it. Scaling or not, just fire yourself from your position. Don't care. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please let me know what we would like to know more about. And we are here to serve. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.